Hola, family. Welcome back to Love and Grit. Me, I'm Olaia. Soy Justin. And I'm Rachel. <laughs> That's- Welcome to Love and Grit. There you go. And if you don't know, it's Dine Latino Restaurant Week in Philadelphia. And we are here for all of it. Yes. This episode, Jennifer Rodriguez, president and CEO of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, will join us to break down the plethora of Latin-owned restaurants at our disposal, along with the other 22,000 Latino-owned businesses she advocates for. Now let's talk about healthy, delicious Latin cuisine, which means we must be talking about Northern Liberty's own Sazon and its innovative co-founder and chef, Judith Cesada Campbell. Okay, so let's hurry up and do this lightning around of Philly faves because I'm hungry. Favorite Latinx owned restaurant in Philadelphia. Uh, oh, that's right. Rachel goes first. Rachel because... always goes first. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, oh, we had um the empanadas from Jezebel's and, and we so had good. her on the podcast as well. Yes, the, the empanadas, there's so many different styles and amazing. Like, yeah. Y'all, when I tell y'all, it's the best for the food and the drink. And if you stay later, you might get a little party. I don't know. Post-COVID is a little different, but whatever. Tierra Colombiana. Mm. All day. What's that? Fifth Street up north? Yep. Y'all know yep. what I'm yep. talking about. Mm-hmm, what a good Latin food is anyway. An institution. Yes. I'm going with a new place in Center City called El Mercury. It's oh. woman owned. It started as like a food truck. She moved into brick and mortar and I got it last night delivered. It's unbelievable. It's healthy. I don't feel like guilty about eating it and just really, really good food and so many different kinds of things. So El Mercury, I recommend it. Not to, not, so many amazing Latino owned restaurants. Just a quick shout out to visitphilly.com and search Latin restaurants. There's an amazing list there and there's so much to choose from. And I just want to say to top yours that my place, Tierra Colombiana, shout out to everybody who's fans. They are now open for brunch and breakfast. What? Uh, That's okay. the best shout out ever. Why? I was just, okay. Oh, should we start this show? <laughs> Let's, Let's do it. Do it. <laughs> Jennifer Rodriguez doesn't play when it comes to Latin representation and inclusion. Yes, she is the president and CEO of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. However, she was also the executive director of the Philadelphia Mayor's Office of Immigrant and Multicultural Affairs, where she championed policies that have earned Philadelphia a national reputation as a welcoming city. Thank you, Jennifer. Point being, she is the go-to person when it comes to the ins and outs of the 22,000 Philadelphia businesses sustaining the economy and growth of Philadelphia's Latin community and making sure this community has a seat at every table. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. We're so excited for Dine Latino Restaurant Week. I know we're kicking off the post-COVID-19 quarantining year and some. I mean, there's no better way to do it than get out of the house for good food. Yes, good food. What week does it start? What week does Dine Latino Restaurant? It starts with Cinco de Mayo. It starts Of course. Yes. Yes. I know, right? So who can forget through the ninth? And how many restaurants do you have participating? What, over 20 at least, right? We have at least 23 and there are a few coming in that are getting the buzz and are getting the, the nudge. And so we are growing the list. So over 23 restaurants probably will get close to 30. I love it. If you're a food lover or rediscovering, you know, um, some of these dishes, it's a great opportunity to get out. They have so many deals. But can you tell us, last year was the first year that this actually launched. Tell us Correct. why you thought that was so important. Of course, we all love Latino food in our in my community, right? But it is not as well understood and doesn't have a higher profile in the larger community. And we were in a pandemic. And part of what we at the Hispanic Chamber really understood early on is that those consumer facing businesses, particularly in the hospitality industry would be most affected. In the restaurant industry, Latinos are in many ways the backbone, not only on the labor side, increasingly as owners of restaurants. So we have a lot of people in this hospital, in the hospitality industry. And that was one of the the most affected industry um, in the city and, and the country. And we wanted to give them the opportunity 
opportunity to really boost sales at a time in which was so critical. Many of these restaurants had a more traditional business model of just you come to the restaurant, you sit, you eat, and you go. Their online presence, their social media presence was not at the time very robust. And we felt that we could close a gap in that. And so we created the Dine Latino Takeout Weekend campaign that extended and became the Dine Latino Initiative with Restaurant Week. And uh, Restaurant Week last year took place in the fall for the first time, and it was incredibly popular. And it was at a time in which the parades, a lot of the activities related to Hispanic Heritage Month were not taking place. So what better way of still celebrating Latino culture than with Restaurant Week at a time in which we couldn't really gather outside. So we said, let's just do takeout. Let's promote these restaurants. Let's let the community at large know that there are Colombian restaurants, that they yes. are Central American restaurants. Yes. That the food in the Mexican community can be also be very varied, right? That you can go to Barbacoa and eat lamb and you can go to another place and eat birria tacos. And so there's a lot of variety to experience. Sometimes people don't understand that depending on what section of America you live in, you are blessed with different Latino communities. And that's the same for Philadelphia. Some things are exclusive to our area. So can you really break down how many countries kind of are, yes, when it comes to Philadelphia. This is why Dai Latino Restaurant Week is so important, right? Because Mm -hmm. while Puerto Ricans are the greatest number of people in the community and you can Mm -hmm. go to North Philadelphia and you can experience Terra Colombiana and other places and Islas (laughs) as well, right? Tony and Freddy's and you know all all the little joints, right? We have a growing Honduran community, Guatemalan community, Colombian community, Argentinian community, and Venezuelan community. Mm. And we have them all represented. So we hear like Hispanic Heritage Month, Dime Latino, Restaurant Week. Are the words Latino or Latinx and Hispanic interchangeable? How does it work? For us at the Hispanic Chamber, they are interchangeable because we want to appeal to a broad community. But certainly there are groups, depending on generation, that prefer some words over another. So if you are a younger generation, millennial and such, for them, Latinx is a term that really resonates because it just takes the gender out of the word by ah latina or latino Latino. and then hispanic or latino or latin american that is a little bit trickier that really has to do with the government and the census and marketing and some groups find that hispanic appeals to them better than latino and we can have a whole conversation about (laughs) that because there's a lot of misinformation out there but for us at the hispanic chamber we use them interchangeably so that everybody feels welcomed in our community. When Visit Philadelphia launched the Black and Brown Owned Business Initiative, which is an ongoing effort to make sure that we're supporting businesses through marketing, advertising, just amplifying these businesses and shining a spotlight, you and I and just our team, we had amazing conversations surrounding that. So what would you tell our listeners about these restaurants and the type of support that's needed? Because it goes definitely, as you know, and you, of course, would obviously agree, goes beyond a heritage month. It goes beyond a specific week. So what would you say were the ways that people really should be supporting and keeping in mind with with a lot of these family-owned businesses? The number one thing for me is shop local, shop in your neighborhood, because when you do that, you are supporting not only your community, but you're supporting families, right? These are in the Latino community, a lot of the people that own restaurants or own retail shops are, uh, these are family-owned businesses. So really you are impacting, directly impacting the livelihood of a family. In terms of people that are thinking about how can I, in my leadership position, if you have one, how can I support these businesses? A lot of our businesses need technical assistance support. So one of the things that we discussed is we have all these great restaurants, the food is delicious, but they're run by families that have very little capacity. So how can we support them? Well, we created at the Hispanic Chamber, 
Dine Latino initiative so that we could do a lot of the marketing and promotion for uh. the restaurants because they don't have the capacity to do it themselves. Now, I'll say that they have become much savvier over the last year. But when we first started, we knew the restaurants and we went to their websites and their photography wasn't that great. And so that's a conversation we had with you at, at Visit Philly. And you have been so great in supporting professional photography for the restaurants that are participating. So now not only does the food look good, but when you go online, it looks good as well. They have just this great richness that is evident. The other thing is that I think we need to explore more. I think that as, as residents in Philadelphia, we may not have uh, the opportunity to travel abroad, right? Because of COVID or any other uh, restrictions and confinement, but we can travel in our city, right? The reality yes. is that you can go to Puyero and eat Venezuelan arepas. You can go to Jezebel's Cafe and experience what empanadas and Argentinian uh, bakery yes. and baked goods are, right? You can go to La Caleñita, which has been around as an institution in the Colombian community. And they have all these baked goods and juices that you and blends that you have never been familiar with because that's just not the world in which the majority of Philadelphians sort of travel. Mm -hmm. So Restaurant Week gives you the opportunity to really check all of those off. It's funny. I was just going to the website to see, is there like, because after you started dropping names. Like your stomach started growling. So, I was, <laughs> <laughs> so we have How a guide. navigate? Yes. We have a guide in Instagram, dilatino underscore PHL, and it will take you to the website. The maps are there. There's yes. dozens of oh. these great restaurants. And the cool thing is, all over the city. So yeah. go see something else, like plan a meal and then go do something. Yeah. I would say you can plan the whole week, breakfast, lunch, dinner, Ooh, drink, breakfast. Things. I didn't think about breakfast, Jennifer. Oh, yes. So cafe y chocolate in the Italian market or Mexican market, depending on your take. And then you have La Caleñita, which is yeah. an institution that very few people outside of the North Philadelphia community might know. It's right on Fifth Street, right above Roosevelt Boulevard, it's an institution and their baked goods are great, right? So I would do that. I would pick a section of the city, go to the restaurant and start breakfast and work yourself down, do a bike ride. Yes. There is Parada Maimon. If you're on a budget and mm -hmm. you need to get that family fed and you need to get that family fed well, Dominican food will do the trick and they are in Callow Hill. It's called Parada Maimon. The food is to die for. And family size, you're going to get great portions. For those that live in Center City and don't want to go too far, perfect. There's another misconception. It is that Hispanic or Latino food is fattening and not good for you. Well, mm. guess what? what? It doesn't have to be that way because we have Bad Bonbon with its vegan. Queen and Rook is vegan. Y'all better be writing this right. down. Mm. Wait, yes. I'm excited. All the flavors. We do have a great article on visitphilly.com with all, these all listed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and it highlights Jennifer's doing an amazing job and the article talks about just all of the different flavors and that's the bonus. That's the great part about Restaurant Week is like making sure you just dive in because there's so much to enjoy. Yes. It's like this is many segments of kinds of food under one restaurant week. Yep. Because there's so many different places that these folks are from and they're bringing like their heritage. And this is what makes Philadelphia so amazing because it's like you can travel the world right here. Okay. And yes. supporting local businesses while enjoying all of that amazing flavor. To us, there's nothing really like supporting a truly locally owned, family operated business because that's where the economic impact really lies. It's so amazing to talk to them and hear their story. Their food tells a story. And like, if you engage with your server or the folks who work at the restaurants, it's amazing how much you can learn. It doesn't have to be a textbook. This is how people should learn, like over food, like over tables, like with family. And it's how you build community and it's how you build tolerance, right? When you get to know somebody personally through food, you gain an additional appreciation for really the diversity of our community. And so many of them are immigrant owned as well, right? Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. We cannot wait 
to dine Latino. I want to see. I want to see your pictures and the community. Take you know, go and tag us, and because we really want to know what your experience has been and what you liked and and what your favorite dish. And don't forget the drinks that these restaurants make. A lot of them have their own beverages, and, and yes. So that's that's another part that is unusual. We don't see that a lot in mm. restaurants. Shout out to Tierra Colombiana. They have the biggest yep. drinks. <laughs> 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 yeah, you'll get into trouble, don't you? <laughs> I know. Oh, like a little trouble, Jennifer. That's why I go, yes. <laughs> I love that I wasn't the one that chimed on the drinks. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that every episode. And Laia, Laia took my place. Listen, this is my favorite place to drink and eat. I'm, oh, right, I'm so, so excited to have one of those right now. We've earned it. Okay, her's new fire potato chips and cheese curls, they are spicy. Whew, they're hot as snacks yet. Hold on. Whew. But you know, it's not just heat. There's some nice, sweet, and savory stuff going on, too. Ooh, there's that heat again. It burns, but it burns so tasty. Ooh, that's hot. Find Hearst Fire Snacks at your store today. Whew. Taste the flavor, feel the heat, break out the Hearst. Chef Judy Cesada Campbell is a pioneer. Yep, she was the first chef to open up a traditional Venezuelan restaurant in Pennsylvania, not just Philly. But lucky for us, she did choose Philly as her home and the home to her restaurant, Sazon. It's been a fixture on Spring Garden for almost 20 years and boasts flavors your mouth never imagined and adding the comfort that 90% of the menu is gluten-free and can be made vegetarian. You're welcome. But what are the characteristics and flavors of a great Venezuelan dish? And how did she manage to marry those with her husband Robert's chocolate alchemist talents? Oh my goodness. I love the name of your restaurant. Can you tell us a little bit of how that name came about? The name Sazon just came from the Latin word, you know. Sazon means the seasoning or the way you use your ingredients on your food. So when you do some food and you put some Sazon in your food, it's the ingredients and the seasoning that you use to give the flavor yeah. of the dish, you know. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we know your restaurant has several wonderful flavors. Did you always know you wanted to have a restaurant or own a restaurant? Well, let me go back a little bit. I come from a very, very long, long line of cook. My mother, my father, grandma, aunt, I promise and I swear that I will never get into the cook scene, but that was when I was in Venezuela. I married my husband in 1998, mm. and my husband is from here, American. So he brought me to Philadelphia. We used to have another company, assembly company, and I used to work next to him. And after five years, we closed that assembly company. And then I said, you know what? We used to go out a lot to have dinners. Mm. And one day, I'm just looking for my food. You know how you are. You want to have a little, you want to feel at home. You want to have that little bit of food that you, they bring you close to home once. You know, I wasn't in Venezuela anymore. And now I'm in Philadelphia. So I was never able to find it. I was found a little Colombia here. Yeah. Colombia it, was the only one, like 16, 17 years ago, that was just Colombia, the restaurant that I was used to. Wow, eat. that's true when it comes to South America. I never thought yes. about it like that. And it then Brazil too. followed and everybody else. But yes, yeah. you're right. Then Brazil, now it's Honduras. I mean, the scene of the restaurants, Latin restaurants in Philadelphia have been growing so much. We all are bringing a little bit of piece of our country to this beautiful city, sharing it with everybody. Yeah. So this is what happened. This is how it comes. You know, I'm like, well, Robert, we don't have any food here in Venezuela. What can we do? Since we didn't have a job, we were looking to do something. And we said, okay, let's open a freaking Venezuelan restaurant. <laughs> and that was how the idea came. And I swear I didn't want it to become a chef. I didn't want to cook. But it's in my blood. Yeah, no choice. So I cannot run from it. So I did it. I started to create the, the menu. We started looking for place. And we ended in Tenen Spring Garden 16 years ago. And is Robert the one? Is he from Philadelphia? Because how did y'all even? My husband is from Philadelphia. Yes. Oh, wow. And That's... he met me in Venezuela. He was bound back in Venezuela. He was a professional bound. Oh, that's why he has such good shape. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> I had to stop looking at your husband. I was just. No, 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 no. He's a hot, uh, he's a hot tamale. We are both hot. 
<laughs> yes, you are, Judy. Yes. Rachel, can you please describe Yo. what we just saw on the Zoom <laughs> recording? When you say the name of the restaurant, yes. you say it correct, and you shimmy your shoulders. Yes. And yes. she was kind enough to do that for us. Just now. And, and, and show us the results of a good gluten-free, also vegetarian, you know. Yeah, yes. I ju- just, as you know what, too? I make a Venezuelan, traditional Venezuelan cuisine without the fat. Like I said, Latin food without the grease. I used to be a exercise rat, gene rat, all my life. I used to climb a lot in Venezuela. Wow. Volleyball, I used to play volleyball forever. So when I came to the city, to Philadelphia, my husband, the second day he bought me a, a bicycle. So we used to mount bike a lot. So we have a tendon, a double bike. Do you like special trails? Oh my God, yes. As a right now, we go to Valley Green and we used to do a lot of the the cancer ride. We used to do the MS ride. We used to do like a lot of rides before we opened the restaurant. You know, I'm trying to get all my Latina chef from the Sister Love Fair to exercise with me. I said to my command girls, we need to exercise because all work and not fun is not good. You know? That's one of the things we love about our region that we say it's a city within a park. So there's so many outdoor activities and especially if you yes. love bike riding. And you we talk- enjoy it. We go to Cali's Drive all the time, you know. Kelly Drive, yep. Absolutely. You mentioned this briefly, but I would love for you to kind of tell us more about this sister community that you have of Latino yeah, the chefs. Sisterly and- oh food my fair. God. Yeah. You know what a bless that was when I found about then in December, I was very busy making my food for the, the holidays, Christmas holidays from the Venezuelan community. Mm-hmm. And then in January, I start looking about, I see all my other girls from the other restaurants talking about uh, the sisterly love food fair. And I'm like, what is this? And I start searching and searching. So it's a community of ladies, supporting ladies. We support each other. Wow. I mean, you mm-hmm. don't know how bless I am to find all these ladies. We have been doing a lot of food fairs all over the city every Saturdays, and it has been wonderful for us to save our restaurant because believe me, we have very bad time. All the ladies owning restaurant, we got it very difficult. So it was so, it's a blessing to find the sister in law mm. food fair and hoping all the girls to get together and do all the things that they have been doing. It's just amazing. What kind of things do you sell there? Well, I started to sell empanadas. You know, when people go to those fairs, they want to eat. Mm-hmm, okay? mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I started to make my medium-sized empanadas. People love them. I make the vegan one, fish. I even oh, make you a make cheese a fish. Steak. <laughs> yeah, I make a cheesesteak one too. Last week for River Wars. Mm. And I brought in and people are so out. People love it. I have the cheese one. I have beef. I have chicken. <laughs> and then I have the little frozen ones that people can take it home. And then my husband uh, helped me with his contribution. I can bring a uh, hot chocolate and I have uh, chocolate bars. I sell bonbones and dry chocolate to make a home. So we have a lot of stuff that we have been building through the GR since I saw it. So we're able to take it out and sell it too. Oh my God. We haven't even gotten to your husband's alchemy of chocolate. No, I, I mean, Nick Legro, he made chocolate from bean to bars. Do you want him to talk to you? Yes, come, come on over. Come on over. Come on over, Robert. Talk to them a little bit about the chocolate. Okay, so I, I bring in organic cacao from Ecuador, Peru, the Congo, sometimes from Madagascar, from Mexico, from Honduras, Dominican Republic. And then I am one of the pioneers in using unrefined sugarcane in the States, maybe outside of Latin America. Mm. I used chocolate as fuel when I was doing 24-hour mountain bike racing. Cacao is unbelievable. People don't even know. It's a vasodilator. It's a hunger suppressant. It's an antidepressant. It's a serious aphrodisiac. Yeah. Um, but I'm not worried about the sweetness of the sugar so much. I'm worried about bringing out the natural flavors of cacao and getting people used to the real cacao. Okay. And now I have all kinds of chocolate. I have bars. I have, I'm known for my drinking chocolate. I think I'm one of the best in the world. Where do you sell your chocolates? Only in the restaurant? I'm currently selling at River Wards, which is a, a nice little gourmet market in Fishtown. What's the website for our listeners if they want to go online? Chocolatephilly.com. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Congrats yeah, on like getting to that. Shove it in like the Cali boys' faces and the Europeans' faces. Yeah, Robert. Some of the best chocolate in the world is from Philly. You got to get out of here like 
chocolate drunk. Oh, I'm coming in a way. Frisky. Yeah. You're going to be feeling really frisky. Yeah. I'm you. <laughs> that, I have no idea. Wait, you guys, I feel like, are the epitome of love, love and, and grit. grit. Yes. Right well, she comes yes. off very feminine and cute and happy, but this girl is like. I'm a sweetie hat. No, I think we, we made each other even tougher. That's yeah. good. Talk about the love that goes into this food because it's not just food that's prepared. This no, is like no. love through your hands <laughs> and culture. I mean, I mean, you don't even imagine like when you, I saw the title love and grit. I like that says us. I mean, you don't know how much passion goes in this freaking place. I mean, between my husband and I, we are so passionate about it. I live in my kitchen. I have to prepare every dish. That's my Food. You yeah. have to prepare every meal that comes and, out. Of- yes. And then one cooking every day. I have one guy that has been with me for 16 years. I'm a chef. They cook their own meal. I never leave my kitchen. I never leave my kitchen to anybody. That's my what? kitchen. I cook my food. You can come to Sasson and I will be always out there in the back. When you first came to Philly, you were the first. Now you're not. Now there are other Venezuelan restaurants. Yes, and you don't know how happy I am for that. Yeah, because gonna... those Venezolanos led me too long by myself. <laughs> Too long. And I say that to my friends in Pujero. I say, you guys led me too long and you don't know how happy I am that you guys are here. They, they, they're here to stay. The pandemic didn't kill us, so we're still here. Yes. <laughs> Applause for that. You yes. know? So for first time visitors to your mm-hmm. restaurant, what should we order? I love the way uh, Philadelphians and people that come from New York, we have people coming from all over the world all the time. And it seems like they wanted to come to Sazon and try the arepas. The arepas are very traditional corn meal that we make here. We make the masa and I got the arepas. I do it like very old fashioned, like my grandma, I ground the corn and then I make the masa and then we make it mm. you know, nice and fresh. So people come here mm. to try arepas. And then mm. they get to know the empanadas. They get to see the menu. They see how many beautiful, delicious, homemade, fresh fruit juices we have. People always try a lot of stuff here. I get it. And I'm ready to try a lot. And now I'm making popsicles, which is another little tiny business within my business within my business. <laughs> I started that like maybe six years ago. I started what kind of popsicles? popsicles? I have my own creation, so I have the cucumber men lemonade pack. Yes! <laughs> Another of my creation is the strawberry ginger honey. Yes! Mm. So I have a, <laughs> I have some tamarind chili. I make mango for the kids because they think like all my packs go far for adults. So I make mango. And I have a little ones with all the fruits, like a fruit punch, but no con alcohol, you know, like a tisana. All the fruits got together and it's very good fruit popsicle. This is something that I can sell in the Sisterly Love Foods Fair. So it's going to be fun. I'm ready for the Sisterly Love Fair. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of stuff going on. Yes, we, we love everything that you're doing. And it's because of you that our region can shine. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, you friend. little pioneer. <laughs> you pioneer. <laughs> yes, I can't believe it. Oh my yeah. God. And, and I tell you, I do it with love and I do it with all the incredible intention to let everybody, one person at a time, knowing my cuisine, knowing what we do, know my country. And at least I give everybody everybody a little piece of Venezuela, wherever they come here, you feel like you're in your own house and grandma house. It does having, feel you like know, that. Some yeah. Venezuelan cuisine, you know, They're like homemade. So that's my own intention. And I'm really so grateful to Philadelphia. You know, I'm here and I'm doing my part. So Dine Latino Restaurant Week starts May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Can we hit one place each night of the week? I would go for that. I mean, I was thinking a breakfast and a dinner spot, I was but I was just being greedy. You, you can hit more than one spot, most definitely. Great. So, are you going to do our itinerary, Rach? Yes, I, I will absolutely do that for you. Go to visitphilly.com. We have an amazing listing of Latinx restaurants, just so many great people besides the amazing food. Yeah, and I apologize ahead of time if you listen to this episode on an empty stomach. Don't do that no more. (laughs) No, that is a key for every time. And really appreciate people who rate and review us. 
especially yes. on Apple Podcasts. Yes. And we appreciate you telling your friends about Love and Grit because we consider you guys all friends. Oh, that's sweet, Justin. You too, Rachel. I meant you. I too. knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Love you. Love Bye. you both. <laughs> Bye. Love you too. <laughs>